equivalent fractions and decimals. This is a skill that will make your life a lot easier. If you're like me, you don't speak the fraction language near as well as you speak a decimal language. So if I am able to convert those fractions into decimals, a lot of times I can solve problems easier. Three-fourths. You know that that means three-fourths is if you were really going to say it out. Now to change that to a decimal, you're going to divide the numerator, which is the top number, by the denominator, which is the bottom number. And so this kind of di this diagram right here seems to be helpful for students because they know that top number goes in the box. The top goes in the box, the bottom number goes outside of the box. So let's actually divide this out. This is a skill that will be done without a calculator. So if you're rusty on your long division skills, there, um, there are some different ways you can practice this. One way that I found that's really um, kind of you know a little more useful and a little more relevant to you is an app called Long Division, and it walks you through those steps. So if you know yourself and you know that you struggle with Long Division, download that app and try from there, or just do it the old-fashioned way with some pencil and paper, and I'll be glad to help you. So I put my top number three in the division box. Four went outside the division box. So I ask myself, how many times does four go into three? And that's zero times. Since I'm out of numbers, I'm going to write in the decimal. And if you'll remember in long division, the decimals are lined straight up. And I'm going to annex a zero. And I think of it as four going into 30 now. Four will go into 30 seven times. So dad divided, mother is going to multiply 7 times 4, which is 28. Then sister is going to subtract, which gives me 2. Then I ask myself again, um, oh, I'm sorry, I have to bring down, I forgot to step there. And I bring down another 0. So I ask, you know, brother brings down now, I'm going to do this all over again. Dad divides, 4 goes into 20 five times. Mom multiplies, 5 times 4 is 20, sister subtracts, and I have a remainder of 0, and you might even draw a cute little smiley face in there to show that you're done, or some people draw a double line there to show that they're done. Now this is one that you knew off the top of your head. You knew that 3 fourths was .75, probably because you know if you have 3 quarters, you have 75 cents. I'm all for you having these memorized. And if you do have these memorized, I don't think there's a need to do long division. So, the more that you memorize, the less long division you have to do. So, let's practice with these. Let's take something like one-third. You can see again that the top number went in the box. Three goes into one zero times. I annex my zero. 3 goes into 10, 3 times, 3 times 3 is 9, subtract, I get 1, I bring down a 0, 3 goes into 10 3 times. You're probably starting to see a pattern that this is just going to go on and on and on. This is what we call a repeating decimal. There is a pattern in the decimal that repeats forever. I can keep dividing and keep dividing and keep dividing and I'm just going to continue to get 3 every time. Let's contrast that with 2 fifths. 2 went in the division box, 5 is outside, 5 goes into 2 0 times, 5 goes into 20 4 times, 4 times 5 is 20, I had a remainder of 0. So that's what we call a terminating decimal. It has a remainder of 0 as you see there, and when dividing, the decimal ends. To help us with those repeating decimals, we use something called bar notation. It is a line that goes over the pattern in the decimal showing the repetition. So here's the one that we had in the previous slide. 0.3333, that would have went on and on and on. So what I do is I put a bar over the part that is repeating, which is the 3. Sometimes you'll see it like this, 0.33 and then a bar over the last one. And that would be if somebody was dividing and then they say, oh, it's starting to repeat and they just put a bar over their last number and that's fine because if I were to repeat just what's under the bar, the 3, it would look the same as the original number. Notice point eight three 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 three. The 8 is not repeating. Only the 3's are repeating so the bar goes over the 3 and not the 8. 
something a little bit different, 0 0.72727272. 72. The 72 is what's repeating. So I put a bar over the 72, the 7 and the 2. See how that's different from the 0.8333? Now the other direction, you have the decimal and you're wanting to write it as a fraction. First step is you're going to say the decimal out loud. So I have 0 0.64. Well that's 64 hundredths. And I say it out loud to show myself the place value. The place value equals the denominator. So I put the number on top, the decimal, 64 on top. It was 64 hundredths. So I put 100 on bottom and then I simplify. I broke those down by 2. 64 divided by 2 is 32. 100 divided by 2 is 50. Then I did that again. 32 divided by 2 is 16. 50 divided by 2 is 25. And I boxed my final answer 16 over 25. Let's practice these a little bit. Pause the video. You take a stab at it and then restart the video to see what I did. Okay, practice problem A, 32 over 5. That's what we call an improper fraction, so you should know by looking at it that you're going to have a whole number as part of it. I put 32 in the box, 5 outside the box. 5 went to 32 6 times. Multiply, you get 30. Subtract, you get 2. Bring down. 5 goes into 24 times. Multiply again. 4 times 5 is 20. It terminates, so my answer is 6.4. Practice B, 3 and 1 6. This one is already set up as a mixed number, as you, which is a little bit easier because I can just go ahead and bring the 3 down. I know it's going to be 3 point and whatever the decimal is for 1 6. So I put 1 in the box, 6 outside. 6 went into 1 0 times, so I annex a 0. 6 goes into 10 1 time. 1 times 6 is 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. Bring down a 0. 6 goes into 46 times, which is 36. Subtract, I get 4. I start to see the pattern where it's going to repeat. See how I clean this up a little bit? I dropped one of the 6's, so I have as few digits as possible. So my answer is 3.16 repeating, and make sure that the bar is just over the 6 and not the 1 as well. For writing it as a fraction, I start with 0.85. I say it out loud, 85 hundredths. So I have 85 as a numerator, 100 as a denominator. I reduce that by 5's. 5 goes into 85 17 times. And a little mental math trick for you. I don't know my 17 times tables. But I did know that 10 times 5 is 50. So I need to go 35 more to get to 85. And 7 times 5 is 35. So I put the 10 and the 7 together to get 17. And 100 divided by 5 is 20. 
Now, on D, I goofed up a little bit. I started by giving you the answer, so I had to swap it around. So, you might have been a little confused if you actually paused the video. What it should have said was negative 1.8. And what I wanted you to see here is that when you have a negative to start with, it doesn't change. We're not doing anything to that negative. So, my answer is still a negative. That decimal equivalent is still negative. So, for 0.8, that's 8 tenths. So, I put 8 over 10. And then I reduce it by dividing by 2, and I got negative 1 and 4 fifths.